Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Let's get our mana storage and distribution up and going. Especially because this mana pool is incredibly low and it's very disturbing. <laughs> so let's get this up and going sooner rather than later. Alright, so now that I've got the elven kind of tier of stuff, the portal to Alfheim, that allows me to make spark augments, and I'm going to use that as my primary way of making my kind of main battery. That's not going to be usable for transporting mana over long distances, but, well, you'll see how this shakes out. So, let's put sparks over all of these. That's not going to do anything in particular just yet. Spark augments, as the name probably implies, are augments on top of sparks. So those are just basic sparks. Now, I'm going to give them all the recessive augment. Oh, right, that's actually... Wait, what is a transferring mana to? Oh, right, so recessives will transfer mana to any other thing that has a normal spark over it. So basically, they try to give up their mana. They defer their mana to anything and everything else, as far as sparks go. Which means, now that they all have recessive, if I place a spark over this pool, it's going to fill up. They're all going to push their mana to it. You can see it's filling up extremely fast. So this one won't be a problem anymore. Because they're all pretty much dry. Almost. And now it's full. So that's going to be my battery. Not this one specific pool, of course. I'm just filling that up because I want the bubble to always be running. But I'm going to place sparks over a bunch of mana pools, and they will be my battery. So all, it's going to generate all here, and then the fact that they're recessive sparks is going to make them transfer over to the normal sparks that are on my battery. So let me get my kind of battery up and going. I think I'll just try to make a sort of neat-looking design with these mana pools. Uh-oh. I think that one just ran out of power. That one collapsed. That means the others are probably really, really, really close. Actually, that one's not very close. Thank God there was nothing in that one. Okay, do I have any mana tablets on me? I don't. I'll be right back. Okay, let's go restart it. Ah, and we're back. Only thing we lost is the lights. No big deal. Okay, let me go to the farm next, because that's the one that I'm worried about the most. Alright, so I've got this kind of neat little geometric shape going on here. This is going to be my battery. So let's just place a bunch of sparks on here, and all the recessive ones should start to push to them. Eventually, they're pretty much... Well, actually, they're completely empty right now, so... Might take a little bit. There we go. Some mana appearing. Alright, they're starting to fill up, but there is one problem. This thing here is now not going to get preference. It's going to get just as much mana as everything else. So it's going to be split between all of them, which I don't want. I want this thing to always be full. So we're going to put a dominant spark on this. So I'm not sure... Yeah, I don't think recessives transfer mana to dominance, but I think just normal sparks will transfer mana to dominance. So if you kind of look what's going on here, if you look at the particles going... All the recessives are transferring to these pools, and then these pools are all transferring to this dominant spark, which is why they are completely empty, and this thing is pretty full. Kind of see that going on again. And that whole dominant thing is what I'm going to do for the distributing mana pools as well. How we're going to distribute to all the side chambers. There'll be a few mana pools with some dominant sparks on them, and then a bunch of elven mana spreaders next to them. And I'm thinking of putting the distributing mana pools up in the air, actually. There, I'm thinking something like that. I think it'll start to look even cooler once these things are actually shooting off mana pulses. Mana bursts. Yeah, mana pools on top, elven mana spreaders on the bottom. Sparks up there, starting to fill up with mana. These are dominant. I might have to change this, because this configuration isn't exactly the most efficient if you want let's say, the maximum number of elven mana spreaders on each pool. Like, I mean, these elven mana spreaders obviously spread more than 
the old mana spreaders, but I don't know if one per pool is going to be enough. Um, we'll see. Let's do a test case. Let's get some aggrocarnations going on in the farm over there by getting mana from one of these spreaders. Now I've got this elven mana spreader shooting its mana bursts over here, and I've got four aggrocarnations going. I suspect it's not transferring enough mana. Although again, it's pretty hard to tell, but I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to run out. Plus, I think I need more aggrocarnations because it doesn't seem to actually be producing it fast enough to feed all five of these. I still have absolutely no buffer built up whatsoever, and these are often sitting empty. So definitely going to have to transmit more mana. But before I deal with that, um, I want to try to solve another problem. So this thing's hoe, as you can see, durability gets used up. It's about to break. That was good timing. <laughs> there we go. So I need to deal with the hoe problem. And I think I know how to do it. So I made the item repair. I think I mentioned that a long time ago. I've never used it before, but I saw it in the item list from Actually Editions. It uses RF to, well, repair items. So I think I can set this up so that it will extract the diamond hoe out of the farming station when it's low on durability, repairs it, and then puts it back in. I think it'll work. So it's, it's hooked up right now, but I have no logic or power or anything going to it at the moment. So let's set it up. First thing, it's obviously going to need power. There we go. And yeah, so it's going to be pretty easy to test, but I need to do something else before I put any items inside of the repair. Uh, I'm going to use this almost broken one for the filter, because I want to make sure I only extract the diamond hoe out of the farming station when it's at this durability. So I got to do like a NBT match on this specific diamond hoe because it's almost broken. Um, we're going to put it, I need an item channel that has the farming station free. That would be either of these. All right, yeah, so let's put it on here. I'm going to leave it active because other stuff is going on it. So we want this to extract. And I think it's only NBT that matters, but I'll just match metadata as well. And we want it to match that specifically. So only if it is three durability will it extract it. And then it's going to insert here. I want to make sure this doesn't fill up with crap, so I guess I might as well just match this as well. Shouldn't matter. So that should work now. But now I need to extract from the repair. So let's do that on channel 4. Looks like that's free. I'm going to assume that you can not You can only extract the repaired item from the item repair so that I don't have to set a filter, but I do have a diamond hoe that's fully repaired here that I can use as a filter if need be. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it. Just extract. And insert. Uh, just to make sure there's no crosstalk between the crafter and everything, I guess I will actually. Yeah, okay, I'll put some filters here. Just to make sure, because I've got multiple item things going on the same channel. I don't want things getting mixed up. Okay. So it should work. Now let's test it. So if it's going to transfer when it gets down to 3 durability, that <laughs> this thing ended up with lettuce inside of it. That should be fixed now, right? Yeah, we're good. I'm glad I put a filter on it. I guess you can put anything in there, even if it doesn't actually repair it. Oh, let's put my hang glider. There we go. Nice. So not super fast, but it's fast enough. It's fine. So let's make this just be repaired a little bit and then I'll put it in the farming station, let it get down to three and see if it disappears and then comes back. Okay, it's at 13 now. All right. So when it gets down to three, it should disappear. Whoa, it did not. Um, I might 
have to configure I.O. for this. It poss I think it extracts automatically, obviously. It extracts automatically from this kind of output, but I think from the tool section, it probably won't extract automatically. So let's set this to, I guess, push-pull. Hmm, you can see it color codes it. So you can pull out of the orange, which is the output there. You can push into the tools, which is the blue, but it doesn't show you extracting from the tools. Can we actually extract from the tool section? Hmm. Ah, oh, crap. You know what? I just realized another problem with this. Because the durability goes down so fast, I don't imagine it checks the durability of the diamond hoe. Like, Xnet probably doesn't check the durability of the diamond hoe. Every single durability tick. So it's possible the durability might actually end up becoming two or lower before it actually registers as the three. This, this probably isn't a good way to do it. Huh. I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to set this up differently, but let me just try it again. All right, it's up to 20. It's gonna go down super fast because everything's all grown up and it's gonna be harvested instantly. Oop. <laughs> it got down to zero. So it either didn't register in time or you just can't extract from there. Hmm. So I was looking online and it looks like one way you can get around this whole hoe thing is you can make a tool in Tinker's Construct that is literally indestructible. Apparently. I haven't actually made it yet, but that's what it sounds like it does. So there is a thing in Tinker's Construct called a... Just go over here and get them. Got them on the crafting table. They're reinforcements. And they use up a modifier slot. Make a whole bunch of those. And just like that sounds like it, uh, it's kind of a durability thing. I don't think it actually increases the durability of the tool, but rather I think it makes it so that there's a, with each additional level of reinforcement, I think there's more of a chance that durability is not used up when you use the tool, is I think how that works. And apparently if you get the level of reinforcement high enough, your tool becomes unbreakable. I think it's four or five levels of reinforcement. Now, apparently one of the easiest ways to get that is to make a Maddoc, which is here. It's sort of like a combination axe and shovel. It actually uses an axe head and a shovel head. And it works as a farming tool. And if you make it out of paper, paper as a material is absolutely terrible in every single way, except that it gives you bonus modifier slots. So without having to actually use the tool and level it up to be able to fit all the reinforcement modifiers we need, apparently if we make it out of paper, we'll have enough slots. And even though it is a slow and terrible tool, I don't think it actually matters for the farming station. I think it just uses the durability. So, let's make this terrible paper tool. <laughs> There's my paper Maddox. Durability of 6. Mining speed 0 0.4. Oh, this thing's pathetic. Yeah, look at that. Five modifiers. So, I think that's going to be enough. Let's put that in here. Each level adds a 20% chance to not use durability. Yeah, so if you get five levels on it, that's 100% chance not to use durability. Reinforced, unbreakable. All right. <laughs> And I suppose if I wanted to, I could take this thing and just get some XP and actually get a couple extra slots. I, like, I could give it looting and stuff, fortune, but I don't think that would actually affect how much we get out of the farming station. Not sure. If it does affect it, then I could do that pretty easily. But let's go shove this thing in there and just make sure it works. I know the tinkers, or the uh, farming station is a little bit picky about what hoes it accepts. So I'm hoping that the modpack makers, or whoever made the config file, added the Tinker's Construct stuff to the allowed list. If not, then I can manually add it, probably. Yes, it accepts it. Okay, 
So it's going to work, and... The 6 out of 6 durability is not going down. <laughs> My Batania Empire is built on built on the back of a paper mattock. Nice. Okay. We're fully out of mana up here, right? Oh no. You know, I wonder how intelligent these agricarnations are. As in, if everything's already grown, does it not use up mana? Because there's nothing to really speed up the growth of? I hope it would be smart about that, but I don't actually know. Alright, well, there's that problem solved. I can take apart this item repair down here and use this for other things, such as repairing my always breaking hang glider. Alright, so I'm thinking this is going to be a much better mana transmission system than like a cluster in the center. The range of the sparks, by the way, is pretty far. I think it's 20 something blocks. So if I put sparks like this that are kind of like on the edge, then they're easily within range of anything I've got going on in the center here. So I'm thinking for each wing that needs power, I'll put a single mana pool right in the center of the threshold. It's got a dominant spark on it, and then it easily and rather aesthetically pleasingly, I think, supports three elven mana spreaders, which should be plenty of mana. If it's not, though, I could put a mana spreader beneath it, I suppose. It'd probably look kind of ugly, though. But I think three will be enough. So let's see how we're doing on mana here. This should be more than enough now. Oh yeah, we're definitely gaining mana pretty quickly. So in that case, let's put down some more aggro carnations. Because this is definitely not fast enough. I've got to be very careful about these, by the way. Because they tend to default to this mana pool. Because they're closer to it than up there. So I need to manually reassign them. Yeah, you can see the bottom one's highlighted. Nope. Get on this one. That one's good. That one's not good. I think we're good. Speaking of, this thing really doesn't have much mana. I should fix that. <laughs> okay, so how are we looking on growth rates now? Look at how much action we got going on. So many sparklies. So many particle effects. Let's see if we're building up a buffer. Oh yeah. Yep. These before never had... They either had one or zero. Starting to build up. Nice. Four. Three. Two. Uh-oh. One. Ah, small delivery. Well, it's still kind of running out. Do I need more acrocarnations? It might just be filling them. Oh, this one's empty. Yeah, I need more acrocarnations. These things are not as powerful as I thought they were. Man. Wonder how many I can add before we start running out. I'll add four more. Alright, I've got the additional acrocarnations set up, and I also put this here. So I put an elven mana spreader down there. Looks, meh, maybe a little bit ugly. Not too bad, though, having it down there. And that one goes to this mana spreader, and yes, it is inefficient to go from a mana spreader to another mana spreader. But I can't hit the pool, unfortunately, because the bubble flower's in the way. And uh, I wanted the footprint of this thing to be pretty small. I didn't want to have a mana pool and a mana spreader here. So it's fine. As long as this pool is going up. Which it is. We're good. Slight inefficiency, but it's fine. Now, let's see if that's enough. Do we have buffers? Oh, whoa. wait, what? Mm, something's not right with that. This one seems to be getting, like, everything, and it shouldn't have more than a stack. I think I need to set it on round robin. So let's check what we're doing for that. So we're extracting from here. It's set to round robin. Oh, we got... Wait. Yeah, so this I can get rid of. We don't need that anymore. 
We also don't need to insert anymore? No, that's power. Okay, I'm leaving everything else alone. <laughs> so we're extracting the food from the crafter. It is set to round robin. It's set to keep 64 in the destination inventory. You know, I think this is the amount to keep... I think this is the amount to keep in the crafter. I think that's what this is. It says destination inventory, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to keep 64 inside of the crafter. I think that's what's happening. So I'm going to get rid of that. And amount, max amount to keep in inventory. So let's set these to 64. And yep, the whole thing is set to round robin. So, should be fine. How are we looking? Nine, one. It's going through its bunch. Okay, I think we're looking better. I'm gonna monitor these for a little bit and just make sure we're going, we have a net positive of spring salads. Yeah, I, I really can't tell if we're in the positive. We're either just in the positive, just in the negative, or like just about perfect. We're kind of hovering around there. I'm surprised that this isn't faster. There, I think I added 12 more aggro carnations. It definitely did speed it up. We are definitely very far in the green. Yeah, I'm surprised how many you need to get it to go really fast, but we already have almost a stack in each one. 62, 44, etc, etc. And I'm sure they're all taking up quite a bit of mana, but surely I'm generating more mana than they're taking up. I must be. I mean, this thing is totally full, as you'd expect. Oh yeah. That thing's totally full. These are starting to fill up. I think these pools over here are higher than the others, because I don't think these actually quite reach that dominant spark over there. But yeah, this is good. I am still a little bit surprised, not just about the aggro carnations, but, you know, I thought there'd be more self-sustaining between the amount of mana you generate to, you know, the, the amount of mana you generate to feed into the aggro carnations to generate mana. This whole loop. I mean, I'm definitely coming out mana positive by a pretty big margin, but I was expecting it to be like a huge margin. But I don't think it's that large. It's large enough that I can certainly do pretty much anything I want, I think. But I was expecting it to be, like, absurd, and it's actually a bit more reasonable. Which, you know, I can't really complain about. Okay, I set up mana distribution for these two sides. And got mana going into these mana pools to supply the bubble. So these are never going to run out of mana and never going to collapse on us again. This one, unfortunately, I can't do yet because I ran out of dominant sparks. Uh, so I'm going to have to wait till I can make more of those. I think I need to make more runes and stuff to get those going. But for now, I just fill this one up to almost max using some mana tablets, so it'll be fine. I also rearranged these mana pools. It was kind of off to the side, sort of, and now it's completely centered. Well, I'm not sure if it's centered... I don't think it's centered this way. But it's centered left to right. Which is much better because when I first put down this one over there to supply this side, the spark actually couldn't reach any of the mana pools because they were off that way. So, much better this way. I think it looks better too. Look at all these pretty particles. So cool. It's starting to hurt my performance a little bit, but I'm fine with it. It'll probably get a lot less busy if I take off the mana seer monocle, I'm assuming. The sparks don't go away, but we see less of the mana bursts. A little bit. I guess the only difference is we don't see the mana bursts through objects. I think other than that, it's the same, right? Yeah, I think that's it. So maybe it doesn't make much of a difference for performance. Okay, um, what's the next thing to do? Well, I guess I want to move my Batania base into here, like my other stuff, the terrestrial agglomeration plate the uh, runic altar, things like that. So let me go grab those and start setting them up in the side chambers. All right, got the petal apothecary set up with the auto refill going on down here. Got the runic altar set up. 
Got two elven mana spreaders. Supplying mana to the mana pool, that's kind of the buffer. And then these two elven mana spreaders to transmit it very, very quickly to the runic altar. Now I guess the next things would be the terrestrial agglomeration plate and the portal to Alfheim. Got the terrestrial agglomeration plate set up in the very center. I was going to put it on the side first, but then I realized it's such an incredibly high mana operation that it's best to put it in the center so we don't have to occupy any more of these elven mana spreaders. And we have the full bank of mana batteries at our disposal. And it fits pretty nicely in the center. Portal to Alfheim should be complete other than activating it. So we have this one elven mana spreader that goes over here to this mana distributor. Which distributes it, out, distributes it out to two pools to the side, and then each one of those has its own mana spreader. I just used these cheaper ones, not the elven ones, because I don't think we need a super amount of mana for this. And each of those fills up these two pools back here with the mana pylons. And I put a couple mana tablets just to speed this up. Hopefully that will be enough mana to activate it. And it is. Alright, I'd say we're back up and running 100% with Batania. Now we have our mana generation fully automated. You can see our battery banks of mana are looking pretty good. They're all about, what, 30... about 30% 30 full each. Looking good, we got our terrestrial agglomeration plate. Runic altar. Petal apothecary, automated. And portal to Alfheim. Yeah, that's everything. Alright, I say our Batania base is officially set up. I don't really have to do anything at this point other than the fact that I still need to make a dominant spark augmentation to make sure that this bubble never collapses. But again, if it does collapse, it actually is, like, literally nothing is lost. It turns out that even these illuminating orbs, although you can't place them underwater, they do not disappear when water overcomes them. So, yeah, literally nothing will be lost if this whole place becomes underwater here. And I'm not really sure if I'm going to need all this room. Everything fit. I mean, that entire place is farm. This is mana generation. And, oh, hello, squid. Poor thing. Did it die? Oh, no. I think I captured it somehow after it died. Oh, yeah, it dropped over there. So farm over there, mana generation here, terrestrial agglomeration plate, and then all the other stuff fit very nicely here. Not competing for room at all. If anything, it kind of looks a little bit... <laughs> not another one. If anything, it kind of looks a little bit empty. So there's tons of room in these two other bubbles to put whatever I want. Can't even think of what to put there. Well, on that note, I think I'm going to end this episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I think I'm going to figure out what to do about mana transportation to the mainland to get my canola seed farm up and going. And in fact, I'm actually thinking of maybe not using mana for that. But I'll touch on that in the next episode. <laughs>